Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at Centec, uh, Canada's, or I should say Quebec's, uh, number one technology innovation hub here in sunny Montreal. We're here on a press trip sponsored by Talus uh, to highlight the company's artificial intelligence uh, investment and technology. Uh, and one of them is the Cortex facility that's in uh, Montreal who is headed by uh, Siegfried Uzal, uh, who, who heads uh, Cortex. Uh, uh, Siegfried, uh, retired uh, French Air Force uh, colonel, flew the Mirage 2000, one of the world's most beautiful uh, aircraft, but also you did an exchange tour and flew F-18s, which was pretty cool. That's correct. Uh, very good. Thanks for, for reminding me, actually, that I had a job before, <laughs> uh, which was uh, really exciting, actually, being a fighter pilot, you know, both in the Air Force uh, in France uh, as well here in Canada, so enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Uh, that's right. I, I screwed it up. I didn't say with the U.S. Navy. You know, that's right, it was here with the uh, CF-18s CF in the Canadian, Royal Canadian uh, Air Force. So let's talk uh, a little bit about your current job, which is also very exciting, right? You guys are developing a part of the, the network of installations around the world uh, through which Talos is developing some of this uh, advanced artificial intelligence technology, billions of dollars of investment the company is making on this breakthrough, both for internal purposes, but also to develop new products. Talk to us about sort of the Cortex model and how you guys here in Canada are working with the whole sort of global infrastructure that Talos has put in place to help develop these technologies. All right, so Cortex, we, we built a model actually that is not new actually. We, we, we did that for, you know, the past uh, 10 years here in Canada actually to have a, a, a true uh, a collaborative model actually to get the insight, support uh, also the academia actually in, uh, in working with them closely and having them actually embedded in our team. So that's uh, uh, the, the, uh, the genesis of the model actually, which uh, uh, we found and the rest of the group are uh, very uh, productive in terms of R&D. Uh, with Cortex, actually, we went a step higher. Uh, we have the lab, the industrial lab, actually, that, that is uh, implementing that model within Cortex, but specialized in AI, artificial intelligence, for the, uh, the uh, uh, product portfolio of Talis. And on top of that, actually, we've added the digital factory, which is the accelerator, actually, of that applied technology uh, from the lab to the market. And, and why is uh, Montreal uh, and particularly attractive? Because you run into business after business after business that says that, hey, this is the place to be to develop some of these advanced technologies. We saw that here from uh, Ascentec, uh, whether it's on propulsion, whether it's on gaming, whether it's on you know, cognitive uh, skills. Why is this such an, uh, an important and why is this the right place to be? Well, you've mentioned it, Sun. Snow, uh, but more seriously, uh, uh, the warm, warm tropical uh, weather. Correct, yeah. Uh, no, more seriously, people, and I, and I'm telling you why. Uh, the diversity here in Montreal is is unique. Uh, it's not only the diversity, actually, the way people live together. Uh, it's, it's, it creates some sort of emulation, actually, for, for innovation that is, that is very creative, very uh, fruitful. So that's the number one uh, uh, topic, I'd say, actually, uh, for Talis uh, to invest here in Canada, to be part of that uh, journey together, the people of Montreal, together, the people of Canada. They are, you know, very open people. So for innovation, you don't, you not only need science and technologists, you need that creativity that you know, sometimes comes from artists, from the people, from the, the diversity. So that it's a true uh, asset uh, here in Montreal and, and in the rest of Canada, but specifically in Montreal. Uh, and also the Quebec government uh, has been good at making strategic investments, right, in education and also to skate to, I love making this hockey analogy, but to skate to where the puck is instead of where the puck has been, given that we're in a town that's fond of hockey. Right. I would say a, a word in French, they, uh, they don't niaise with the park, which is, you know, uh, play with the park like that, actually, no, they know the park has to uh, uh, add up into the goal, right? right. And, and uh, they put in place, actually, such strategy, actually, to incentivize, actually, the creation of those talents, you know, through the university, but supported as well by the industry with their use case. So that marriage, actually, between the two, it's just, it's just awesome. I wouldn't want to be snowing the puck uh, either. Um, you like that? <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, so what's next in terms of, um, well, what I didn't ask is how you guys are working because you have a cent center in Singapore, there's the big center that's in France as well, and you have other sorts of technology centers around the world. How do you guys work in that whole Talos ecosystem to help make sure that all the company's priorities are, you know, the, how, how does that whole system work from your standpoint? So you said it actually, it's a distributed center, right? Uh, and the, the, the mother, uh, Rudy, is, uh, is in France with the uh, digital factory in Paris. But the tri you know the trick is actually to ensure that the governance uh, uh, is applied uh, 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 in a way that uh, uh, it is orchestrated 
but at the same time, you know, the innovation comes from, from the bottom too, right? You don't want to apply some pressure actually on those centers. You want to ensure actually that innovation is not going uh, not gonna to come only from Paris, but it comes also actually from, from the centers, uh, the satellite centers, which is truly actually the way the uh, uh, organization Intelis is working, not only for research and technology, but for the digital factory as well. There's a governance investment, you know, on the platform and the technology actually that is cloud-based is available to uh, other centers. But at the same time, actually, if there's some innovation on the platform from a technical standpoint or from a, from a project, it's been incorporated actually as part of the platform as a benefit to uh, all others. So then we build, you know, really productive uh, synergies. Okay, uh, two quick questions. Uh, one, um, you have a very tough and demanding boss who's managed to do something pretty impressive, which is raise R&D spending, raise margins, but also control costs, but try to do it in a way that doesn't disrupt the company's long-term operations. Um, what is the key from your standpoint in an atmosphere where, you know, every dollar, every euro counts, um, but at the same time, uh, speed, right? How, how do you balance all of these different uh, elements of it to ensure that you guys are getting the technology, have access to the technology, moving it through as efficiently as possible, uh, and then getting it to a decision cycle because the guys in Paris want to make, you know, obviously actionable decisions on what do we press ahead on, what do we cut, how do we invest? You know, talk, talk to us about how you balance all and how the company balances all of these sort of competing agendas. Well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just want to mention, it's good pressure to have. Uh, you can create a lot of technologies, actually, that are, you know, uh, meaningless, right? And, and, uh, and, and, but that pressure that we have, actually, is the pressure that all industry have right now. Um, and we've noticed, actually, that um, some companies, actually, that are creating AI algorithm, uh, but I don't have, may not have the, you know, intimacy that we have with the customers, uh, it's, it's quite a, 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 a barrier to uh, enter the market. We have in, uh, in, in Thales, you know, all the components actually to succeed. We have the intimacy of our customers. We have that technology base that is huge, right? Uh, we are not shy investing, and, uh, and that re relieve a bit of, a p uh, of pressure on us. Uh, uh, that CEO decided actually to invest massively in those technologies, actually, not to uh, uh, um, uh, put some relief, you know, on us in terms of uh, what we're going to do, etc. But to sustain the efforts, actually, in marrying actually all of those three major components, which is basically the uh, uh, the technology, the market, so that intimacy with the customers that we have, actually, and then the model, actually, that spin around actually those two in order to ensure that there is the accelerations of that technology in the market. So I don't feel that a bad pressure. I feel that a good pressure, actually. So from a operational sense point, actually, the the uh, I would say actually the, the the challenge we have actually is to convince all of the businesses, you know, uh, of Thales. Uh, to uh, adopt, you know, that that mentality, those practices, those new tools uh, uh, that uh, the digital factory actually is pushing out to the to the businesses. So there's an operational challenge, which is normal. Uh, but you know, with the youngsters actually and the the new employees actually that are getting uh, on board, you know, with the talents on a regular basis, you know, they they there a lot of appetite actually to go down this road. So um, yeah, I think it's okay. Um, and, and, and since uh, airplane fans, I have to ask you one last question, which is uh, Mirage 2000, legendary airplane. It's an airplane that you wear, uh, one of the most beautiful fighters ever made, and also the F-18, another tremendous airplane. All right, how do you rate them? Uh, what's the performance difference? What did you think? What do you think flying a Mirage? What do you think flying an F-18? So first, uh, fast jets you fly actually stay in your heart for, for your life, right? So it was a Mir Mirage 2000. You said it actually is very uh, uh, a beautiful aircraft. Uh, we, we say in France, a very sexy aircraft. So it was designed to go fast, high, you know, and, and to kill uh, interceptors you know, as fast as possible, right? It was designed for that. So I enjoy a lot actually flying that racer right from the beginning. F-18, uh, highly maneuverable aircraft actually that carries actually a lot of weapons, you know. So it's it's uh, uh, so that you know uh, both performances actually uh, the aircraft and the ability actually to carry all those uh, 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 bombs and missiles and all that stuff, plus actually being very in advance in terms of ergonomy actually and the OTAS and all the uh, uh, the, uh, the the screens that you have actually in the aircraft in the early 80s actually made that aircraft actually a true uh, performance aircraft actually in mission it was designed 
design for, which is a multi role, which was not actually the Mirage 2000 air defense. So uh, a, good, uh, a good balance in my career. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> uh, uh, Siegfried Ruzal, retired uh, French Air Force uh, fighter pilot who uh, heads the Cortex uh, Artificial Intelligence Center, and Cortex is Center uh, of uh, Research and Technology for Artificial Intelligence and Expertise, right? Did I get that right? Right, yeah. Thank you, Vago. Yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's the least I, at least I could do. Cedric, yeah, thanks job. very much. Best of luck. Look forward to seeing you uh, here again. And by the way, beautiful watch. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>